Well, to take a further look at the situation, we're now being joined by Colonel Hassan Sani Labo, a security expert. Good evening, Colonel Labo. All right, we also have the Kaduna State Camp Chairman, Reverend Joseph Hayab. And at some point, a brother to two of the victims named Gideon. All right, Gideon, how are you doing now? Hi, good evening, King. Sorry about your loss. Tell us what happened to your brothers. I understand that two of your brothers are victims of this attack. Um, yes, on Monday, um, I have two brothers on the train uh, by the names um, Jesse John Mamuda and Gary Gambo. Jesse is the one in charge of the of the food on the train. He sells the food on the train, and Gary is his brother. So that fateful day, he, as usual, they go and come back. But unfortunately, um, I was on the train going to Abuja, and they were on the one coming back for Kaduna. And when we, when we crossed at Gidan, I called them and I was like, okay, guys, we'll see you tomorrow in the morning. So um, before we got to Kubwa, the CSO on the train called me to one side and he was like, I'm here, something is wrong about the other train that I should try as much as possible to reach my brother. So on doing that, I tried his number, it wasn't connecting. I tried the other, my other brother, his number two was not connecting. So I tried other people that I know on the train, none of them, their number were not connecting. So I called a cleaner that works, works on the train. Then he told me he was not on the train because he dropped by 2 p.m. And I was like, what really happened? He said, the truth is the train was attacked. So this is what happened. According to the um, eyewitness that I got, he said, when the bomb exploded, the train derailed. After the derailment, the bandits were shooting sporadically from different areas. And um, they, they entered into the first class. Their concern was just the first class. And unfortunately, my brothers were all in the first class. Hmm. The other lady that was part of um, the lady that works for my brother, her name is Anna. Hmm. She took, usually he normally compiles reports before he drops. So she was in the first class with him, giving him the book for him to compile the report. And when the attack happened, they packed all of them. According to someone, someone, one of the guys that hit in the toilet, he had them saying that we saw you, we saw you, you understand, that they were, they were, they were time, time conscious. They wanted to achieve what they wanted to achieve and leave immediately. <clears throat> so they took my brother and they left with them. So we've been trying to get to them, reach to them. Yesterday, me and my uncles went to all the hospitals to confirm they are not dead. And yes, they were not. So later today, um, in the early hours of today, um, my brother's boss got a call and it was lo and behold my brother Jesse that was talking and we got the proof of life call and then uh, behold all of them they are all okay where Up are they right now told, where are they right now they are in the bush they are in the bush with I call them the big boys they are in the bush with the big boys yeah they are in the bush we, we have not heard anything from them yet up to now we are still hoping and waiting okay so they have been kidnapped they have been kidnapped. Have you heard any word from the government regarding this, the state government or, or the military or the federal government? Any words of um, assurances or information regarding the situation? Well, uh, the only there are there are uh, phone lines to call. I was able to call one of the phone lines, and uh, Hayap, I think there's someone who picked. He was like, uh, "We should be, we should be, um, we should be patient." that they are doing all they can. They are actually the ones that directed me to go to the hospital to check in case if they are injured or they are dead. All right. So up until now, I've not had anything from anyone yet. Okay, do, do I have Colonel Hassan now on? I wonder if I have Colonel Hassan, the security expert on. Okay, looks like uh, um, he's not yet connected to us, but let me go to you, um, Reverend Joseph Hayap. Thank you very much. Yes, Reverend Joseph, uh, it's such a, a sad situation that we are finding ourselves in. Um, are members of your communities among the victims this time around? <laughs> Anything that happens to Kaduna happens to members of my community because I'm the leader of the Christian community in Kaduna State, not in Kaduna Town, in the whole of Kaduna State. And from the information I'm getting, it seems the particular boys they are talking about are very close to me, but I didn't even know. Are you of the Ugambo, my mother's family? We still yes. have your parents in Kano? 
Yes. I hope yes, I'm right. You are correct. So they are correct. That are very dear to me. I've known their family as far as 1987. So we've been very close. These young boys have come to me in life for so many things that I didn't know they are even victims. If not now that I'm on this program and I'm getting to know that this thing is even beyond what I'm talking about. Earlier today, I spoke to one of our very promising young man who is even contesting for the senator. He was also in the train. He got shot. The fact that they removed the bullet in Kaduna, but he had to move to Abuja so that he will get proper medical treatment. So there are a lot of people that were involved or victims of that that are either related to me as church members or related to me as Christians or related to me as Southern Kaduna people or related to me as Kaduna state people. And most importantly, every other person in that train is a human being. And which, uh, when you talk about whether I know, they are my people. Uh, I'm a leader for everybody, and I pray for Kaduna State. Yeah, the Minister of Transportation, of the Minister of Transportation, Mr. Rotimi Amechi, uh, had uh, revealed that uh, there are no rail tracks, there are no security, you know, for the rail tracks. He had uh, sought to get um, some sort of uh, necessary digital security and crime prevention equipment, but it was not approved. How do you respond to that coming at this time? But I feel so if you've been following the trends of events in Nigeria, you will know that the focus of those people in power is about money, not about us. If not because this unfortunate incident happened and happened publicly, the fact of all is that the story you would have been hearing is different because our government or our leader seems to like telling terrible lies or telling stories that cannot be uh, substantiated instead of talking about human lives. One of the statements he's been credited to have said is about the amount that they lost because of this uh, accident or this bandit attack. Not even the lives in the bush, not even the lives that have died, not even those who are in the hospital. So sometimes when we dissipate energy, begin to analyze them, it hurts us. So why don't we just talk about how to find solution about those who are already in the hands of the bandits and those who are sick and commiserate with the families that are. That's why I issued a statement today and I said, Kaduna has become an everyday morning center. Every morning you wake up, if there is no killing in Southern Kaduna, there will be killing in uh, Giwa, there will be killing in Bridengwari, there will be killing in Chukun, okay. there will right. be killing for something in other places. Which is very sad. Well, right now we've been joined by the security expert, uh, Colonel Stan Labo. Hello, uh, Colonel Labo. Good evening, Colonel Labo. Hello, good evening. Okay, please. Bring us up to speed. Um, there there seems to be... Good evening. Can you hear me? Do we know of any arrests right now? Of the fleeing terrorists? Do we know of any arrests? Do we know of any arrests? Has any arrest been made? Well, I can see presently, I think the... Uh, not, to the, not, to, not to my knowledge, not to the knowledge of the public either. But I think the security agency will be in a better position later, as a matter of fact. All right, so let, let's, let, let me ask you this next question, which has been on the lips of many people. What is wrong with Nigeria's security architecture? Our military have been known to have gallantly contributed to global security. Why are they having so much challenges? Um, doing the same thing at home here in Nigeria. What is wrong? Um, we seem to be having a bit of technical glitches with this um, particular line. Okay, let me come back to you, um, Reverend Hayap. You are a religious leader. And you do not have political power authority to do much for your people. What, what options do you have for self-help uh, in such a time that we have found ourselves, especially in your zone? Business is not a one-man business. And security is not completely about the use of force. Security is about people. Security is about information. Security is about intelligent gathering. Security is about steering up people to be willing to say what they see or what they know. I think we have not, we've lost that in Kaduna. 
People are not willing to say what they know. People are not willing to say what they are suspecting because either they don't trust the system or they are afraid for their, their lives and so many other reasons. I think what government is supposed to deliberately do is to connect with the people, to relate with the people, to build the confidence of the people, to win the trust of the people, so that the people can talk to her, the people can tell her what is going on. I'm sorry that I'm going to say this. One of the things I keep seeing every day in Nigeria in the last 10 years, if not more, is the, F, the concentration of security work is about guarding some VIPs. Everybody wants to join the SSS so that he will be posted to villa or government house to guard VIPs. Everybody wants to be in the military or in the police or in the Navy just to be a guard to one VIP. It is not about securing the people. It's not about securing the nation. It's about being a guard to one VIP so that if people come near him, he will show up and push them away. Unfortunately, the real places that people are supposed to be secured, the real places that government is supposed to deploy security agencies are having less attention. And so sometimes, I actually, I've ever said this on this medium, that have you seen our banks? If we have 400 banks in Kaduna, that likely means that we have about 400 to 800 policemen guarding those banks, which we have no business for them to guard the bank. All the banks need to do is to employ their own security men, bring them to police college to be trained by police, and provide for them equipment or arms to guard their banks and allow the police that are being paid with taxpayer money to secure Nigerians, to protect Nigerian roads, to protect Nigerian rates, to protect Nigerian airport, to protect Nigerian home. Unfortunately, that is not. And well, you know whether we would like it or not. The, the, the president truth is that has just met people with the who are posted to bank are being uh, the bank gratify either the commissioner or some big men out there, and they are not doing the job that they were employed to do for Nigerians. Well, the president has just met with the service chiefs and uh, has directed immediate implementation of surveillance system. You know, um, does it surprise you that this is coming at this time? Especially since if I have been around drones. for these years that I'm involved, I know that every time when we have this kind of crisis, there will be a meeting between the president and the service chief, and there will be an instruction. The truth is that how many of those instructions have actually been followed? I'm fully aware in this government that the president even ordered the, the general of police to be in a particular state when people were being killed. He never went there. And there was no reprimanding or no step taken by government to show that, wait a minute, the president and commander in chief ordered that you should be here and you do not go. So sometimes these meetings are just probably to dust tension within the time that everybody is angry. And after some time, everything will fizzle out. Okay, Until we begin to be honest to security strategy, honest to security deployment, honest with the way we carry out issue of security, uh, we will keep having this thing because the criminal seems to be, if you listen, read my press statement, I said the criminal seems to have even a better intelligent gathering than even the security force that have been trained for intelligent gathering. So you just ask yourself, what is really wrong? Is it, some, is it a cause? Or is it because some people don't love this country and are not patriotic enough? Then why did you join the police in the first place? Why did you join the army in the first place? Why? You see, I have to travel with that train. Even last week I was on that train. And I know that in that train you will find policemen and even some armed men. But because there is more than just having uniformed people on the train, there is proper understanding and need for intelligent gathering. Are we saying that there was no interception or even communication? One of our governors. Do that? Hello, Reverend. The Kogi State governor yes. recently said that 90% of the security problems in Nigeria are politically uh, are political. Um, do you share that with him? Well, I, I respect his office as governor, but I don't want people to use propaganda for every story. You see, this blame game we've been using is the reason why we've not been able to solve our problem. Uh, what is political? Okay, if it is political, then I think the, the leadership at the moment should look inward and ask herself, what, who are those responsible? We've had several times, SSS would tell us that even governors are planning to disorganize Nigeria, and there is nothing to show off for such kind of press statement. No name is attached, no arrest is made, because anybody who wants to destroy Nigeria or who wants to dent the integrity of this country can, should not be protected, should not be covered. But what we keep seeing every day is we are trying to throw blames to some people. Is everything politics? Let's keep politics aside and deal with reality. Okay, thank you so much, Reverend Joseph Hayab. Um, and uh, Gabo Gideon, just before we go, Gideon.
Hello, Gideon. Hello, Gideon. All right. <laughs> well, we just I'm uh, do you. apologize I'm with you. for I'm all with you. the. I'm with you. All right. So, what is it right now you are waiting for? You're waiting for the calls. What are you waiting for at the moment? Clearly, there's this uh, palpable sense of fear, not just with you, but everyone in Nigeria and in Kaduna State. So what, what, what is it for you at this moment, you and your family? I think I really want to thank God for the ability, for the wisdom he has given to me, to be able to downplay the, the, the seriousness of this matter. I have served as the Minister of Information to my entire family, friends and family, because people keep calling and asking me what's really going on, uh, you know. And um, I know that I know how hard it is for me to be able to calm them down. Um, basically, the calls everybody has been asking: me, What's the next step? What's happening? Have they called you? Have they reached out to you? And the same thing: the pressure is mounting on my on Jesse's boss. We all are waiting for the call. We want to have the call to know what exactly they expected. They is expected of us, because trust me, those boys is not a good place they are right now. They are really going through a whole, whole lot. And we just wish that the government can intensify efforts to to pressurize these people, have any form of communication they can do with them so that these people can be released. We're just waiting for calls to come in to know what exactly is expected of us so that we can have our loved ones back. Well, Gideon Gambo, I... I, I, I... I, I want to say thank you for um, your strength in sharing this time and experiences with us. We know how difficult this must be for you. And we wish that, yes. um, you know, they will return to you safely and soon. Mm -hmm. And uh, thank you so much, Reverend Joseph Hayab. Thank you, too. And Gideon, good that we are with you. Uh, you are a close family to me. You know very well. I didn't even know yes, about this, not now. We've been yes, with sir. your parents for many years. I didn't know that those wonderful children are now victims. But I, I'm assuring you that we are praying along with you and we'll continue to add our voices until your brothers and all others come back home. Thank well, thank you so, you so much, uh, Reverend Hayap. Hello. Hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.